everybody, it's Mr. Poten here. I got a special guest, Roxy Tyler, on today's episode, episode number three. In this episode, it's a very special episode, we get to visit uh, two horror conventions. That's something me and Roxy like to do very often, is visit these horror conventions. And we get to go out to Monster Mania in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. After that, we're going to visit uh, Horror Hound, which is in Indianapolis, ten and a half hours away from here in Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, quite a trip. And uh, we're going to be showing a short film from Arthur Colifer, which is called The Adiposier Child. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Excellent, excellent work from Arthur. Uh, it's a very scary horror uh, short film. I think I like everybody's going to enjoy it. Yes. And uh, we're going to get a special interview from... John Amplis from Martin, Day of the Dead, and other Romero films. And that's, that's pretty cool. And then we visit uh, Tom Burdinsky at Horror Hound, which uh, he, he wrote, produced, and directed The Italian Zombie Part 1 and 2, and also the Giant Rubber Monster movie, and then a special uh, musical medley uh, compilation from me, Mr. Poten, with a lot of footage from both conventions. Stay tuned. Thou great and holy Vertler, divine lord of the living effigy, who rises and writhes in the great living city beyond, 
Hidden and elaborate of the alphabet is thy sacred name, the seal of all things becoming. I call, Vert Lur, upon thy emanation, that which lurks within and watches from behind the eyes of dolls. O thou great and holy, which lurks within and watches from behind the eyes of dolls, having no eyes of your own, I evoke thee, I conjure thee. Vouchsafe and descend from thy abode, bringing thy influence and presence to walk among us, to inhabit the children of here and there, that we may behold thy glory and enjoy thy society and aid. Children of here and there, I implore thee, draw forth thy dark playmate to inhabit the cloth and serve me. Draw forth thy dark playmate to inhabit the cloth and act as my fetch. Dark spirit by Vert Lur and Klug Verg, I command thee, the blessed and filthy strips of cloth upon the altar of the puppet star. Dark spirit, I bind thee to the consecrated rags upon the altar of the puppet star. I bind thee with my knot work to the disused rags upon the altar. By the eyes of dolls I bind thee. By the eyes of dolls thrice I name thee. Ragman. 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 By the teachings of Verdlur, I have flayed it from the back of its bearer with the curled athema. I have cured it in the smoke of the sacred herbs, and blessed it in his holy name. All this I have done before I summon thee. I now hold the map in my left hand. It is known that only thou can read the legend of the map, and for the Adiposir died. Is this not so? Then, in the name of Verdlur, I offer this. Will you get it for me? You shall find that which you seek. By the eyes of dolls. By the eyes of dolls. When you find it, return it to me.
adipocere child, creature of flesh, become creature of wax. We pray thee, bear us creatures of clay. May Vertler have smiled upon thee. We are blessed. He is blessed. You may continue to your next destination. Go now. Come, the Egyptian child. Flesh become wax. Wax becomes clay. To become 
become the father, to become the child, to become one with that which lurks within and watches from behind the eyes of dolls, having no eyes of its own, to become one with it, to give it eyes, to travel to the great living city beyond, to know the walled ones who are the city and the gateway, to become one with bird love. Live outside of time, in the outer, in the forever. Temple of the Doll exalts you. Welcome to the fold, brother. All hail, Vertler. This is Mr. Putin. We're here on Behind the Lens, and I'm talking to my good friend, Tom Burdinsky. Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Tom Burdinsky, the writer, director, and producer of the Italian Zombie movie, Parts 1 and 2, which is a two-part homage to, and a movie that kind of pokes a little bit of fun at, European horror films from the 80s. Movies like uh, Lucio Fulci's Zombie and The Beyond and Gates of Hell and all that kind of fun stuff. We made the movie because we love those movies. You know, we're not making fun of them, like, you know, to be in that way. But those movies were all, you know, came out in the 70s and 80s, and they're kind of sexist in some ways. And to watch them today, it really makes you laugh, just at the sexist dialogue and the sexist characters. So that's where a lot of the humor in our movie is from. We lifted a lot of the dialogue in our Italian zombie movies directly from those movies and made a new plot around all that. Oh, so, excellent. Uh, that's a really yeah. neat idea. Yeah. Um, as far as distribution goes, I noticed that you uh, self-distribute yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why? We do. Yeah, we um we initially thought about well we'll make this movie let's get it out there we'll try to find a way to sell it you know we'll, we'll try to hit distributors up with it and see what somebody says and you know maybe somebody be interested in picking it up but the more I started looking into it I'm seeing these distributors and you know what they do and they go to conventions and they put your movie in a few stores and all that kind of stuff and that's great but if you're looking for a horror movie in general at least my kind of horror movie you're, you're looking on the internet you know you're googling you know the websites you check out you, you know the podcasts you like and you know, all that kind of stuff sure. so I'm I'm sitting there thinking, what are these distributors doing that I can't do myself? You know, I can put my stuff on the internet, I can have a website, I can contact the podcasters and do all that kind of stuff, and I'm representing just one movie, my own. These distributors have 80 movies, 100 movies, I'm one of 80 or 100. And how much attention are they going to give your one movie? Exactly. Next 
be none. So we've done it this way. You know, you can buy our movie on Amazon. You can buy our movie through our website. You know, Indie Flex. There's several ways to get it, but I control all that. So I think it's worked a lot better for us. We've sold a couple thousand that way. And, you know, how many would I have sold through one of these distributors? And you also got to break it down. You sold a thousand. That goes right to you. If you're dealing with a distributor, you're probably not even seeing your cut at that point. Well, and in most cases, the distributors want to buy your movie outright. They want to say, here's, you know, 500 bucks. Now we go now away own, and shut up. Right. We now own your movie forever. We'll see you later. Now, I don't like that idea because who knows? My, you know, my next movie I make might all of a sudden want, people want to say, well, what has this guy done before? You know? And if I don't own that movie, guess what? That distributor has total control of my movie. He makes all the profit on my old movies. Absolutely. So I, I like the idea of keeping control of it. All right, just to expand on this topic, what do you think about Hollywood itself and what's the future of Hollywood right now and the independent filmmaker? Well, you know, it, I guess in my opinion, the technicians, the, the great technicians, the guys who are special effects guys, the great photographers, the, the great guys who kind of do that side of film, they're in Hollywood. That's where they go. That's where they can make their money. The creative people, I think, are steering away from Hollywood because Hollywood doesn't care about creativity. Hollywood cares about flash and cares and about money. Right, and money and remakes and reboots and things that they just think they can sell. So I think the, the better writers and all that stuff are staying out here in the indie world. The great technicians are going to Hollywood. So you've got to kind of decide what do you want in a movie. I mean, do you want to sit there in, in a brain dead movie like, you know, an avatar? or something like that. Beautiful. You know, great eye candy, but you've seen the story boring. 50 times and boring. Yeah, I mean, you've seen it so many times, or do you want to see something creative? I'm I'm on the storytelling side. I want to see something, a new story I've never seen before. Exactly. Well, Tom, thanks for uh, joining us on Behind the Lens, and we're glad to have you, and we wish you a lot of luck with your films, and uh, we'll see you around. probably don't know who this man is, but that's not what's important. What's important is, I know who this man is, and I grew up watching these movies, and his movies are what inspired me to be a filmmaker. Uh, John Amplis has worked with uh, George Romero on quite a few occasions. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I've done five, well, I've done six films with uh, George, uh, starting with Martin. Um, George uh, found me in a play, saw me in a play in 1976. A couple of months later, he had rewritten the script and came back and asked me if I wanted to do the role. So I was a kid just right out of college wanting to be an actor and uh, big bang boom. I was um, I was in rehearsals and on uh, on film by fall of 1976. Wow. Yeah. So then I think um, the, I have to look at the banner, but I think the second thing we worked on was Dawn of the Dead. Um, and I did the casting, directing for Dawn of the Dead, and then had a little bit parts, little bit parts here and there. One ended up on 10 seconds of screen time. Uh, Martinez, yes, I remember that. Being a Hispanic, and I apologize to all you wonderful Hispanics out there. Uh, wasn't my idea. Uh, but uh, that was our second project, right. and then on to I think it was Night Riders was after that, right. which was like ten weeks summer vacation, and I played a mime and I didn't have to speak, so I didn't have to learn any lines. So and then my favorite horror movie of all time should be should be let's say Day, Day of the, of the Dead. Dead. Yes, indeed, Day of the Dead. Mr. Putin's favorite yeah. horror movie. With 
my really good friend, uh, Lori Cardell, who I just met yes. uh, last week. In fact, we just did a little teaser, uh, investor teaser, for a young filmmaker in uh, Long Island who's trying to put a film together called The Three. So, um, and I've been keeping in touch with Lori for, uh, well, since we did the movie. Right. Because so, we both live very, in the same I, met her, I got to meet her once, very nicely. She, she, yep. She's a terrific guy. Yeah, I her, love her in Day of the Dead. I, I did too. And it, it, it's one of the first strong women's characters in a horror film where, you know, women, where women were not, like, subjugated and, you know, and she was the hero. She was, she saved the day, so. John, do you, uh, you find it hard to stay uh, up with the times and Hollywood and being an actor living in Pittsburgh? Uh, I don't because I don't do a lot of film work anymore. Right. I do some minor independent films um, when I have the opportunity, but most of my work has, been, I came from theater and I continue to work in theater. Um, I teach acting and directing for Porn Park University. Uh, we own and operate the Pittsburgh Playhouse. I'm the associate, associate artistic director for uh, the Playhouse Rep, which is our professional company. Uh, we have a training conservatory with a BA and a BFA program. So you're very much involved in an artistic uh, which is Always, really always, always. And yeah. I try to remind a lot of our actors that watch the show, you know, it's not about making money, it's really about the art. It's great to make money and, and eat, of course, but it, 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 if, you know, when it comes to people like us, we really do it because we love it. We do do it because we love it, and we also do it because we, we want to, it's a craft, so that it's something that you have to work on, which is what I've learned to appreciate as, as a teacher, you know, that preparation is pretty much everything. you got to be prepared and ready to go and know what you're doing. The other important thing I think about actors, uh, for actors, is not just in, um, not just with screenplays, but with theater plays, is that um, everything you need as an actor is in the script. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and if, if you don't see it in the script the first time, read it again. And, and, and if you're still not getting it, read the script again. I heard Doug Bradley say that yesterday, and I stole it. And I think it's absolutely true. You know, the writing is really, uh, the writing makes the characters. And they jump off the page. And okay, I'm going to ask you one more question. Sure. What do you think about all these horrible horror remakes that are being done in Hollywood? Now, I know that's a very popular question. I'm going to ask it. <laughs> I think um, I, there are some that, you know, sort of work for uh, a reason. Um, uh, I, I actually like the Dawn of the Dead remake. That's what people are saying, that they say that Dawn of the Dead was a, a, a fair, a fair <laughs> I representation, it. I think, of what ju the spirit that George brought would to be, it would be initially. Yes. And, um, but I also hear that the Day of the Dead remake was, that's what I heard. Yes, it was, yeah. And and um, I heard somewhere along the line, for some ridiculous reason, some, uh, somebody wanted to wants to make a remake of Martin, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Because yeah, that's so of and, the time. And I think that, yes, it, does, it is of the that's time. That's part of its character. And I also think that um, remakes are often made because people think they can make yeah. extra cash. Yeah, it would be like remaking like What's Happening, the TV series. <laughs> yeah, come on. One thing, there's one remake though, the recent remake of True Grid, I thought was okay because it did not, it does not offend what the Hollywood version did with John Wayne, right. and which is a movie and that it's stands so on its own. As well, it is dis time. disconnected. You know, Wayne was an iconic figure of the Western exactly. and of that time, um, but this one that the Coen Brothers just did was uh, true, truer to and the novel. They're, they're excellent. excellent. Yeah, I mean, if I could work with some directors, I would love. I, I, love I would love to be in a Coen Brother movie uh, somewhere, sometime. Coen Brothers, are you out there? You know, if you need an old man that looks like me, please. By the way, Garlith, Jarlith Conroy, who was in Day of the Dead, okay, 
is in the first 10, 15 minutes of True Grit, the new True Grit that the Coen Brothers did. Using our, our yeah, data to absolutely. that. Absolutely. Support that entirely. Absolutely. Well, John, I want to thank you for this interview. I hope thank I get you. to work with you in the future. I hope so, too, yeah. And you're watching Behind the Lens. Behind the Lens. Here we are. Hey, I'm here with my new best friend, Norman Reedus, and you're watching Behind the Lens. Nice. Well, 